that's a good scripture. Man. All scripture is good. This scripture right here gives hope. This scripture right here gives you salvation. And point us to where our salvation comes from. Amen. Amen. Judge chapter 3.
announcing uh, this part of the program that uh, I'll speak to me, it's no introduction.
requested that I do something. Amen. Guide me over, bridge me over, pilgrim to this very land.
The whole book is good reading in your leisure. I want to lift up uh, two verses to preach from and preach around. Acts chapter 12. Amen. I want to lift up verse 13 and 14 in your hearing. I'm reading from the King James Version. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. Amen. He may be seated in the presence of the Lord. She ran in and told them how Peter stood before the gate. For a little while this morning, the Lord and I want to talk from this subject. We want to pen this text. We want to talk about the junior usher. Amen. That's what we want to consider these next few minutes, the junior usher. Hallelujah. That's what we want to talk about, the junior usher this morning. Amen. Thank you, ushers, for serving. You may relax with some message of prayers. If you don't mind, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. let's talk about the junior usher. That's what we want to consider these next few days. Amen. Amen. In our text today, sisters and brothers, we will note here that the church was under persecution. So it is today, the church is still under persecution. The enemy is still after the church. Hallelujah. Jesus had already told us that up on this rock I build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. But still the devil is after the church. He, he wants the church. He wants the people of God. Hallelujah. He wants to persecute. He wants to persecute us. He wants to shut us down. He wants us to do, he want to do everything that he can to stop us from telling the good news. Have I witnessed today? So here in the text, the, per the church is under persecution. Uh, the Satan, his attacks uh, is still uh, going on. He still wants to hinder and stop the great commission. Hallelujah. And this time the persecution came from Herod, uh, the king. This was Herod Agrippa's grandson. I can't get no help in here. Uh, he was the, the persecutor. Hallelujah. I guess it ran in the family. <laughs> I can't get no help in here. You know, something just, just run in the family. Y'all heard that term, you know, it, run, it runs in the family. I guess persecution ran in his family because here it is now. His grandson has came on the scene and he's persecuting the church. And the Bible said, as you look at it, he said, and they killed James, the brother of John, the sword. And watch this now. And it pleased the people. How is it that you can kill, hallelujah, a Christian and people be pleased? I'm not making it up. It's in the text. It said, and it pleased the people. Y'all looking at it? He killed James, the brother of John. And it pleased the people. Y'all know who this James was. This was the same James that went up on the Mount of Transfiguration. You remember Peter, James, and John. Y'all not praying with me. They went up on the Mount of Transfiguration. And now John, James, has been killed. And the Bible said it pleased the people. Have I witness today? May, may, I, may I help you this morning, sisters and brothers, to understand that every time the enemy attacks a child of God, watch this now, every time the enemy attacks a child of God, the devil is pleased. I can't get no help in here. The devil, I need you to know, the devil wants all of us. He's after all of us. It makes no difference if you have a 
title or no title. Y'all understand that to me? The devil wants all of us. It makes no difference if you are BET or EBT. The devil wants you. I can't get no help in here. Tell your neighbor, the devil wants you. It don't matter where you live, what side of the track you were born on. I can't get no help in here. It don't matter where you work, what you drive, how many degrees you have. The devil wants you. He said that the devil came to steal, kill, rob, and to destroy. Have I witnessed here? I'm talking about the junior usher. I'm going somewhere. The devil wants you. He, he, he wants you. He, he don't want you to succeed. He don't want you to work in the church. He don't want you to, to hold the name of God. He don't want you. He, he wants to destroy you. And the Bible said, and when they killed James, the brother of John, it said, it pleased the people. It pleased the people so much that it, it, they, they, they pleased them so much that, you know, they said, they said, well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let's kill Peter, too. Y'all look at this right there. I'm not making it up. And it said, because they saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Y'all look at it. He took Peter, uh, apprehended Peter, put Peter in prison, was going to kill Peter, but it was doing, watch this now, it was not lawful for them to do it because it was coming up on Easter. Y'all don't know what to shout at. We, we coming up on Easter, right? It was coming up on Easter, and we too are coming up on Easter. They put him up, but they weren't going to kill him, Pastor, until after Easter. Now, now, now that, 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 that got my attention right there because uh, I wanted to know when is it convenient to do wrong? If it was wrong to kill him before Easter, it was wrong to kill him. I can't get no help from here. It was wrong to kill him after Easter. When is it convenient to do wrong? When is it convenient? To do wrong. When is it convenient? I'm going to try this side. When is it convenient to do wrong? Never, ever, ever. Let me help. It doesn't matter if it's wrong before, it's wrong after. And all of us have been there. We've all made mistakes. We've all had blues and blunders in life. But I come to tell you this morning, it's never convenient to do wrong. It doesn't matter if it's night, if it's wrong in the day, it's wrong in the night. Come on with this. It's never convenient to do wrong. They put Peter up. And the word says when they put Peter up, watch this now, here we go. The word says when they put Peter up, they put him in prison, hallelujah. But the Bible says, this is what I like, this is what I like. It said, it said but the church went down in prayer. Y'all don't know what to shout. Peter is in jail, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church. Come on with this. They didn't look for a bell's bondsman. <laughs> they didn't have to go put no houses up. They didn't have to go mark no money. The church went down in prayer. Uh -huh. May I tell you today, some of you and brothers, whether you believe it or not, prayer still works. Prayer still works. Whether you believe it or not, prayer still works. Prayer still works. It still works. They went down and prayed. You looking at them? The Bible said they went in prayer. Peter now is in jail. Peter is guarded by 16 soldiers. Now, you know, Peter must have been a bad man. Uh, 16 soldiers? For one thing, 16 soldiers for
for one man. Watch this. His hands and feet were shackled. And they put 16 soldiers to guard one man. I can't get no help. Peter must have been a bad man. I guess they, had, they remember Peter. You, they remember Peter. Y'all remember Peter. They, they must have remembered Peter that night. You remember when they came to apprehend Jesus. And Peter took out his sword. I can't get no help in here. And cut off one of the soldiers' ears. Y'all remember? And, 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 and Jesus stooped down, picked it up, and put it back on. They, they remember Peter. They said, Peter. They said, Peter, I'll touch you. Can I win this here? They, they, they said, Peter, pack it. Can I win this? Uh, and and they, they put 16 soldiers around You might wonder, Pastor, why did Jesus take the time to put that God's ear back on? I wonder why, because Peter was trying to protect Jesus. You remember, Peter had told him that I fight for you. He also told him I never denied you, but he did. But I went this here. I feel like preaching. Listen, listen, he, he's holding it. He, he put it back on, and this is why he put it back on. Here it is. Don't miss it now. You can write it down. Put it, he put it back on because he needed to hear. He needed to hear what the Spirit was saying to the church. He needed to hear the Word of God. For the Word said, Faith come by hearing. And hearing by the word of God, he needed to hear. You might need to tell somebody, put your ear back on. There are people in church today act like they don't have ears. All of these things that are going on in, in the earth realm, people act as though they don't have ears. All the things that are happening to us, the Bible has to fulfill itself. These things have to be. Tell right. 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 hey, you, put your ear back on. Put your ear back on. Put back on. He puts it back on. Here's Peter now. He's, he has 16 soldiers. He, he has 16 soldiers. He, he had, they have four squads. They had four squads of soldiers, four to a squad, equal 16. And what they did, they took ships. Because Peter was not to escape. Watch this now. He was not to escape. And while they took breaks and worked on ships, Peter was sleeping. <laughs> he was sleeping. You know, sisters and brothers, it's, 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 it's good when you can rest in the Lord. Y'all know what shout. It's good when you can rest in the Lord. When you know the Lord got you, and when you know you're in the hands of the Lord, can get no help in here, you can rest in it. Some of us need to get some rest. So we stressed out. Come on here. We, we got all this anxiety going on. We just need to get some rest. Baby, if you gave that thing to the Lord, I can't get no help in here. If you put it in the Lord's hand, come on and get you some rest. Why keep stressing over it? Give it to the Lord. Put it all in his hand. I can't get no help in here. I said, put it all in his hand. This. And this and that and this and that, this that, y'all get this and that, this and that, put it all in his hand. Come on, what is it? Peter was resting while they was taking ships. And the word says that night there was an angel. Well, well. There was an angel came. The angel of the Lord. 
came into the cell. Hallelujah. Came into the cell. Came into the cell. Don't miss this. The angel of the Lord came into the cell. I want you to know today, wherever you are, the Lord can get to you. I can't get no help in here. Wherever you are, the Lord can get to you. I don't care how many guards the devil put around you, the Lord can get to you. Have you ever been in a place you thought you were trapped? You thought God could get to you? God can get to you. I can't get no help in here. Your problem don't get too bad for God. God can get to you. He knows where he at. Here it is, Lord, he said, it said the angel came in. Come on, with this here. It said the angel came in and, and, and a light shined in the prison. Here it is. Now, I told you earlier that Peter was guarded by 16 soldiers. How did the angel get by the soldiers? <laughs> I think you don't help me here. I, I mean, how did the angel get by the soldiers? Well, I want to believe. I want to believe it was something miraculous. I want to believe it was God. I mean, I mean, if if he can walk. Through walls, yep. Come on. Yep. <laughs> Come on now. he can get into prison. Yep. Y'all remember Brother Deacon that morning, that after the resurrection, and, and, and you remember Thomas wasn't there, and the other other disciples had gathered together, and they was in there, Hallelujah, getting ready to go back to their old way, and Jesus just walked in. All right. All right. I can't get no help in here. He just walked in. He, he didn't knock, hallelujah. The junior usher didn't have to let him in. He just walked in. I'm going somewhere. He just walked in. Tell your neighbor, he just walks in. He, he just walked in. I can't get no help in here. When hell is breaking loose, he'll just walk in. When trouble is all around, he just walks in. When you checking it on your job, he'll just walk in. Children, when you're having your school and you don't know what to do, he'll just walk in. How many you know he'll just walk in. He, he, he goes in. He goes in and he smokes Peter. He tells him to get up. Put your sandals on. Dress yourself. We finna go. Hallelujah. We finna go. We leaving here. Don't miss it. I don't know what's been at you bound. But I come to tell you this morning, we feel the dog. Put your shoes on. Put your sandals on. Come on here. Put your coat on. We we feel the dog. I can't get no help in here. Oh, that's somebody in this house today. You've been catching hell all week. You had a bad week. You got a bad report. But I come to tell you, put your shoes on. We feel the dog. You got to see. See, sisters and brothers, you got to learn. You got to learn how to encourage yourself. You, you got to talk yourself out of some stuff. Come on here. Y'all ain't saying that to me. You got to speak over yourself. You got to lay hands on yourself. You got to encourage yourself. Y'all ain't praying with me. I come to preach. Y'all just didn't come to pray. Listen, listen, you got to talk to yourself. You got to tell yourself, I'm coming out of this. On the preacher, the pastor, or no one else to, to encourage you. Encourage yourself. Here it is, sister and brother. You don't even have to wait for Sunday morning. Come on now. Yeah. 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 Every day. Every day. Every day. Yeah. Every day. Even in the morning time when I, when I wake up, I get up and I look in the mirror and I encourage myself. I can't get no help in here. Before the song came, I, I would call it myself beautiful. <laughs> Come on here. You got to encourage yourself. It don't make no difference what somebody else thinks 
think about you or what they say about you. What do you say? What do you think about you? Encourage yourself. Speak over yourself. Don't let the devil tell you you can't have this, you can't have that. If God said you can have it, it got your name on it. Won't you go on and claim it? Push me in a trash. Come on here, say it. Come on here. Say, come on here. So he, he says, let's go. And here it is. And the word says, they get up, they leave. Well, well. Y'all look at they left. They left mm -hmm. the jail. All right. All right. Went by yeah. 16 guards. 16. Y'all look at that. Come on. Come on. Left. Went out and followed him. Watch this. He said, and when they were past the first and second ward, they came upon an iron gate. Now, isn't that the way life is sometimes? When, when you when you get out of when you get out of one place, when you get out of one bad spot, here's another one. He was out of prison, but here's the gates. I can't get no help with him. Here's the gates. And what do you do when the Lord has told you you coming out? And when you get out of the cell, here's the gate. What do you do? I'll tell you what you do. You keep going. Watch this. Watch what happened. The Bible said the gate was there. But the Bible said that they kept going. Peter and the angel. They kept going. They kept going. They had no keys nor toes to the gate, but they kept going. Here's what happened. What happened? And the Bible said, and when they approached it, <laughs> when they got close to it, yep. it opened up. Okay, y'all know what to shout. Even yeah. when they approached it, when they got close to it, it opened up. Okay, y'all feel this. When they approached it, when they got close to it, it opened up. And you know why some things are not open? I can't get no help in here. Hey, if you want it to open, you got to approach it. You got to get close to it. I can't get no help in here. I feel like preaching if I go. Sometimes you just got to approach it. Hey, listen. Approach it. Approach the addiction. Approach the problem. I said to me, you got to approach it. You got to stop ignoring it. Don't you? 
to tell it open. I ain't ashamed of nothing that the Lord did for me. Come on here. You know, the devil has shamed us so much that we don't even have testimonies in the church anymore. We don't talk about the goodness of the Lord anymore. How do you expect our children to have great faith and we don't have it ourselves? You got to talk about the Lord. Mama and yeah, grandma and them used to talk about the Lord. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. It's sad now we don't hear Jesus' name until we come to church. Don't hear too long then. <laughs> you got to talk about your trials and testimonies. We overcome. Come on here. We got to talk about the things that God has did for us. Come on here. The things that God has done for us. He's done more than this thing. Have he done anything for anybody in this house besides that? I'm the only one that he blessed. Don't talk about it. But you don't need to hear us talk about the goodness of God and the ways he made and the things he has done. Come on here. But they need to hear us talk about how, how we struggle. They need to hear us talk about how we made mistakes. Come on here. They need to hear us talk about it. But we're too busy being religious. Let me say it again. We're too busy being religious. This generation needs some transparency. They don't need religion. They need relationship. I can't get no help with you. They, they need some relationship. They need to talk to somebody that's been in the hole that they're in now. Come on, man. Come on. Been Yeah. They need some relationship. They need somebody to say, listen, it'll be all right. If God done it for me, he'll do it for you. Come on here. So Peter goes to Mary's house. He knocks on the door. And the junior usher. <laughs> Give him a text. The junior usher comes to the door. Those doors are not like our doors now. They weren't, they're not as modern as doors now. Those doors in those days didn't have no people. Well, well, well. <laughs> Only way you can look out, baby, you had to open it. Y'all yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't know what shot. Yeah. <laughs> the doors in the houses today, watch it. If you don't want to be bothered, you keep out. <laughs> Not only that, you ain't had to go to the door, man. Cause y'all got surveillance cameras. How are you here? You ain't had to go to the door. You said that last time. <laughs> got your car in the garage. They don't, they don't even know you there. So when the junior usher owner went to the door, mothers. When she went to the door, watch this. She didn't see Peter, but she heard him. <laughs> I wish I had somebody. She didn't see him, but she heard him. It's in the text, I'm not making it up. The Bible said, and when Rhoda went to the door, y'all looking at it, and as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel named Rhoda, Rhoda in the Greek means Rose. Okay, it means rose. Her name means rose. Hear them. And the Bible said, and when Rhoda, when Rhoda rose, when Rose Rhoda, come on here, and when she knew Peter Foss, yeah, well, yeah. Well, well, come on. It's something about the Foss. Well, well, right. He said, he said, my people know my. What y'all thought I come to do? Come on, man. I came to preach. Come on, man. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. When, when, when my people, he said, they know my voice. And a stranger, they won't follow. All right. Rhoda didn't have to see him. She knew it for 
cross. The word says, and the cause of the gladness, mm -hmm. the cause of the gladness, mm -hmm. this is the text, I'm not making it up, All right. and the cause of the gladness, watch this, she couldn't open it. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, well. Have you ever been so glad <laughs> that you couldn't talk about it? Amen. You, you, you. You ever been so glad you couldn't open it? You, yep. Yeah. Okay. We still, we still around tax season. <laughs> And when you go to the mailbox, and when you get it, and it's up, it's of a pretty good amount, you're so glad. <laughs>
one wrote to us, the junior us, is talking about us. Let's go and really see if Peter at the door and God already has. And when Peter walked in the house, they got all right. Yes, sir. I flow right now. Peter walking. The people were just like Roman. They were astonished. They got all right. They were surprised. They couldn't believe their eyes. They got all right. And Peter stepped forth his hand and said, Peace. They got all
Yeah. 
Not the dad of Chuck. Just like he said, a child can tell you anything. He said, a fool can tell you anything. We ought to be praising God in this moment.
very good with words, but I, I do thank God for each one of you who served in this fellowship. Not only that, thank God for each one of you that served in this congregation. Amen. 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 Like I said, it's been a, 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 a long while since we allowed to come in and, 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 and uh, just honor uh, one another. Amen. Amen. I'm just grateful. Like I said, I don't know everything, I don't understand everything. And I'm not ashamed to say But I do know Jesus. Yeah. And he's my Lord yeah. and my Savior. Yeah. And, and, and as it was mentioned earlier, us just stand on the Lord. And mainly that's the first person I saw and see when they come right. into this sanctuary. Yeah. And we want to be recognized as a church. Amen. That's loving. Amen. That's kind. Amen. That's compassionate. Amen. And to make people feel like they're welcome when they come here. Make them feel like they're loved when they come here. Amen. And, and, and that's what they do. The bird says something. That iron gate is in front of you. Approach it. Right. God open it up. But you can show that love, but you can, right. you can give that love, you can give that wealth. That's with anybody. He, he, he said something to me. You got to do it. You got to approach it. And you never approach it. You never break it. You're going to get your break but you approach it. You're going to get your break from it. And, and I, I don't know about y'all. I need a break from it. When he said, go. Oh, Now to him that is able to keep us from falling, 
and present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy. To the only wise God be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. And all of God's people said, St. Andrew P.B. Church, where Elder Buford Moore III is pastor, is located at 1393 Swancott Road, Madison, Alabama, 35756.